If you are interested in stories with happy endings, you would be better off playing some other game. In this game, not only is there no happy ending, there is no happy beginning, and very few happy things in the middle. This is because not very many happy things happened in the lives of the three Baudelaire children. Let's meet them, shall we? Klaus Baudelaire loved books. Nothing pleased him more than spending an afternoon filling up his head with their contents. And everything he read, he remembered. Klaus's oldest sister, Violet, was one of the world's greatest 14-year-old inventors. Anyone who knew Violet well could tell she was thinking very hard when her long hair was tied up in a ribbon to keep it out of her eyes. And Sunny, the youngest Baudelaire, liked to bite things with her four ah. very sharp teeth. To cross gaps, run forward, then press the right mouse or control button to jump over. <sighs> to pick up an item, press down on the left mouse button and move the target over the item. Item is a word which here means fork. When the item or fork is highlighted, release the mouse button to pick it up. Well done, Violet. For my contribution, I'll go across the pier to retrieve the old boot. There are many things that you can count on in this world, but many, many more that you cannot. For example, you cannot count on those floating logs to stay precisely where they are. To get past low barriers, simply run up to them. You'll automatically climb over. <laughs> to pass taller barriers, run up to the barrier and press the right mouse or control button to jump and climb over. <laughs> run up to the ladder and press the up and down arrows to move up and down. <laughs> I got the boot. What now, Violet? We need to get that jack-in-the-box down. Sonny, I'm gonna need your assistance. Dude. To bite through even the toughest of materials, target the biteable object by first pressing down on the left mouse button, then releasing it. That's great, Sonny. Now I have everything I need. Now if I attach this to here, and hook this up to this, presto. I think I'll call it a smasher. The way to use inventions like this smasher is somewhat similar to picking things up. Target the smashable item by holding down the left mouse button, then release the button to break the item into little bits. Those crates won't know what hit them. Ow! Be careful, those crabs can hurt you. Maybe there's something in one of these crates to cheer you up. Your misery in this game is inversely proportional to the number of lockets you can collect. The term inversely proportional here means that the more lockets you come across, the lower your misery. What is that? It looks like the letter A. The Baudelaire's were about to discover that there are many mysterious letters in the world, some of them good, some of them not good at all. In this case, the letters are good. You may pick them up and collect them. A is for antipenultimate, which here means third to last. Violet, it could be said, is the antipenultimate Baudelaire.
Those crabs have stolen our picnic basket and carried it up that hill. Buffa, no. We can use the rotten eggs to scare them away. But I don't think either of us can throw them with enough force. We'll need something to lob them with. I'll need a handle, a scoop, a gear, and one last piece to attach everything together. To save your game, run up to the game saver. No good can come from going into the water, except to what might be waiting there to devour you. Violet, does this toy boat look like it will work for your invention? Yes. I'll check around inside for a scoop. Sunny, bite that rope. This ice cream scoop is perfect. Now I just need some sort of gear and a handle. Could you use any of the parts off that old tricycle? Only if I can get Sunny's help to bite the pieces into shape. Groba! Top-notch biting, Sonny. I'll call this one the lobber. Those rotten eggs should work perfectly with it. To use the lobber, target the crabs with the left mouse button, then release it. We'll always have enough rotten eggs to use in the lobber. No sooner had the children vanquished the crabs than they saw Mr. Poe walking towards them. Mr. Poe? From the bank? Children, I'm afraid I must inform you of <coughs> an extremely unfortunate event. <coughs> your parents have perished in a fire that destroyed your entire home. I know you must feel awful right now, but I have some very good news for you. As the executor of your parents' estate, I've made arrangements for you to live with your dear Uncle Count Olaf. Consider yourselves lucky children. He's an actor by trade. Generosity is rare in his profession. <clears throat> I would like to tell you that Count Olaf lived in the prettiest house on the block, with a workshop for Violet, spacious library for Klaus, and a white picket fence for Sunny to nibble on. And it would give me great pleasure to inform you that the children went on to live happy lives under the care of their beloved uncle in this cosy and inviting home. Unfortunately, I cannot. This lovely home belongs to Justice Strauss, Count Olaf's friendly next-door neighbor. This is the house of Count Olaf, 
And this is where it pains me to continue our story. Ah, my dear children. I am your beloved Count Olaf. And my heart, much like my home, is wide open to you. Especially the kitchen. My theater troupe will be dining here this evening, and you will have dinner ready precisely when we feel like eating it. Money, money, money. Tons of new fancy clothes for me. None of us know how to cook. We'll need a recipe. Maybe we could ask our new neighbor, Justice Strauss, if she has a cookbook we could borrow. As a judge, she must have a huge library. That's a great idea. Let's go next door and ask her. <laughs>